Alright, here we are for the second live video of the day. If you're with us earlier for our workout, we did like a 35, 40 minute cardio and home workout. More likely we were in the New York East Coast, you guys are snowed in, so we did a live training session with you guys right over the uh, Facebook. So now we're doing the uh, next episode, episode number four of Steve Says. Uh, I actually start looking forward to doing these live broadcasts. I think I probably talked more in the last three weeks on these broadcasts than I've talked in the, the last 10 years. So even, even if no one's watching and no one can hear my words, then there's, there's still something that's liberating about just being able to be real and speak your mind and not worry about what the fuck anyone thinks about it. You can just say what you want, do what you want. That's why, you know, it's a free country. That's what I fought for, to, for the right to be able to just say what I want and do what I want. I'm sure some people out there watch this video and think to themselves, I haven't even heard people even said to me, like, oh, look at Steve making a fool of himself again. Then, then how do you know I'm making a fool of myself again? If you weren't watching, so then why the fuck are you watching? And don't watch, I don't really care, it doesn't matter to me. It's gonna take a quick sip of my herbal life before we continue. That workout that we did earlier, the, good, the, the reason why we train the way we train at such a high intense level, like I'm still feeling the after effects of the workout that I did with you guys earlier. So, uh, you know, I'm still riding the high from that workout that we did. And that's, we, we started that at 12.15. So we finished that, whatever, over two hours ago. I'm still riding the wave of that workout. So that's why we train the way we train at Peak Physique, first of all, before we get into everything else, is you could run on a treadmill, right? And maybe in 45 minutes, you're gonna burn whatever, 400, 500 calories and just making it up, whatever. Don't use that number. The numbers they tell you on a treadmill that you burn, usually are bullshit. So you might burn 400, 500 calories running on a, jogging on a treadmill. But when you're done running on that treadmill with that steady state training, you're not gonna burn it, that's it. You burn four or 500 calories. When you do the type of training we do, quick, high intensity, short little bursts like we do, then you might only burn 250, 300, whatever calories during the workout. But it's gonna, in the long run, over the next 24 to 48 hours, your body's just gonna keep burning, keep fueling. And that's why we train the way we train. It's over two hours since the workout finished. I still feel it in my body. My body still feels it. I'm still pumped up from it. I'm still energized from it. I'm gonna ride the wave of that training session that I did with you guys on this video. I'm gonna ride that wave all day. I'm still pumped up from it, still feeling good. Still, ha still have energy, it doesn't make you tired, it's gonna make, it's gonna make my day productive. Even if you're stuck in, uh, in the snow and you're snowed in and all that, it's gonna make yourself more productive. You're gonna burn tons of more calories throughout the day and that's how you burn fat, that's how you get in shape, that's how you get tight, that's how you get your abs, that's how you do it. So basically I've been getting tons of, dozens of, of messages and texts and phone calls and emails People tell me how refreshing and insightful these live videos are, which is, I guess, sort of surprising, but maybe not so much. You know, for, for people to say that just to watch someone tell it like it is with no bullshit, no filters, which they're so used to out there, all that politically correct bullshit or whatever, and they wish they had the balls to just step up out of their comfort zone and just let it out. So, uh, the Facebook lives that we do is, that's what we do. We're here to let it out. We're here to just be real and tell you really what's what and how it is and just straightforward what's going to get you results, what's going to change your life. So a quick test here, a quick little quick task we do, we always like to give you little tasks here during these live videos. If I'm not looking at your camera, it's because we have two different ones on at the same time, our business page and our personal page. So maybe you think I'm not looking at your, maybe look cross-eyed, I don't really care, whatever. So today's quick task is just to let out your fucking beast. Just let it out. Just stand up and scream. Don't even care, I don't care where you are. I don't care if you're at work, you're in the car, you're shoveling fucking snow. I don't care where you are, just stand up and yell. Just yell out, fuck, yell out, I don't give a fuck. Just yell, scream, ah, scream, just let it out. It's gonna feel good, just let it out. You hold, you hold your, you're holding in too much, you're holding back too much in life, probably everything you do. Sometimes you just have to let it out and just be yourself. Have the balls to step up and step out of your comfort zone and tell it like it is and be real and not hiding it, you know, pulling it up inside. Basically this leads me into what I'm gonna be rambling about today. I'll just get a quick overview of what we're gonna go over today. First, we're going to do a quick recap of, of some of the stuff we went over last week. I always like to go over that stuff because we always have a lot of killer content, so I just want to refresh your memory on some of the stuff we did last week. Then we're going to go into how to operate on a level that will completely change your outcome and your outlook in your fitness journey here at Peak Physique and everything you do in life. So two quick two things on that, how to operate at the next level. 
Then I've been receiving a lot, tons of emails and texts and phone calls and Facebook messages and all that crap. Uh, receiving lots of questions about different things about that they want me to uh, address on these Facebook lives. So I actually took some of those frequently asked questions that we've been getting a lot of. We're getting tons of the similar type questions and I turned them into some actual segments. So some of those are about some older people, older adults training in our gym because we're such you know intense workouts. Uh, I'm going to give you a quick, like I said, a recap of last week. Then we're going to go into some other things about how to uh, take your game to the next level. So first, first I want to do a quick recap of last week. So we have this board coming up. It's on the way, a huge chalkboard with those with the neon chalk where you're going to write what your why is, why you're here at the gym, why you came in. You're going to write it on the board, a couple words. It could be your fitness goals, your professional, your personal, whatever your why is. Why are you doing what you're doing in life? You're going to write that on the board. Every time you come in, you're going to look at it. It's going to make you work, train with a sense of purpose. For every bring in the fire of every second of every second. That's what you're going to do is see your why. Every time you walk in, you'll see your writing, your words, in, in, according to your goals. I want you to see that every time you walk in the door. Basically, I want you to walk in the door. And I don't care how your day was. You're going to walk in like you could walk in like a lamb, walk in like a sheep. And you know what? You're going to see those words. You're going to come in. You're going to kick ass in the workout. And you're going to walk out like a fucking lion. So basically, I told you last week, my why was to help as many people as possible, as, as many people as I can, as that's my mission and purpose, is to lead by example in the trenches for all you peak freak members out there and my two little crazy ass kids, which I'm sure will come down here screaming like maniacs pretty soon, as they always do. There's some around here. I think they're still outside shoveling snow or having a snowball fight against the entire neighborhood or against the cops or something. I don't know. Something outside going on. Anyway, we went over last week our new lateness policy, which is in effect, which every time you're late, you're going to donate $1 to the American Legion for each minute that you're late. Plus, you're going to do your certain amount of exercise, punishment exercises, depending on how many minutes you were late. We also had a task. How many of you did the task last week of going, scrolling to your Facebook feed and dropping the first 10 people who were dragging you down, the first 10 people who had negative posts that don't add any value, and they're not in the same lane, and with the same direction that you need to be going in your life? I don't care if it's a long time friends, family members, I don't even care if it's your fucking spouse or your, your goat that are, that, that they're either with you or they're against you. And we know if they're against us, then they're our enemy. And it's our clear cut mission to fucking destroy all of our enemies, right? So you need to cut them, whatever it is. I don't care who it is, what it is. Those 10 people that you went, the first 10 people, did you cut it? I want to see in the comments if you did. They're not your friends anymore and you blocked them so they can't even see the shit you're going to talk about them. So talk all the shit you want in the comments. That's fine. So today I want to go over two things, or really two ways of thinking, two different types of mindset that will cause you to operate on an entirely new elevated level. No matter what you do, I guarantee you're not fully applying yourself to your full potential in every task or objective or goal. There are factors in front of you and probably in your own fucking mind, self-limiting your progress, limiting your forward momentum, limiting your true potential, and holding you back from the personal and professional and fitness goals you have. So we're going to go over some things that are going to definitely help you overcome that. As, as you know, I have had in the past some self-limiting factors that bombarded me in, you know, in my life, my entire life basically. I always said I felt like I was Tupac. I was, always felt like it was me against the world. Growing up a poor, hungry, skinny kid, pissed at everyone, everyone around me, hated everyone. It was just ingrained in me that struggling was a way of life. That's what life is all about, just struggling. Just scrapping day to day, living day to day, meal to meal, dollar to dollar. That's always the way that I was thought about it. It's always the way I was brought up. But success in any area of life, I always thought was for the lucky people. But like the saying goes, the man didn't fall on top of the fucking mountain. He didn't fall there. So once I joined the Marine Corps, broke out of that mindset prison that I was in my entire life, I was able to experience the, a human, what the human mind and the body were actually capable of. I was able to experience true life and death, teamwork, camaraderie, and culture. And as you know, that's the exact experience that we've created and culture that we've created here at Peak Physique to help you all overcome any and all fucking obstacles that are in your way. Make, making, you know, on your way to becoming the amazing badass motherfucker that you're capable of. Today we're going to show you how to strategically, brutal, brutally, and effortlessly steamroll all that bullshit standing in your way and take you on to that next level of greatness. I'm not sure if you noticed, but a lot of what I go over on these Facebook Live episodes is even though we're at gym, obviously we work out, we like to get in shape, we lose a lot of weight, but a lot of what we go over on these Facebook lives isn't, it doesn't have to do necessarily with training. A lot of it's all about your mindset. That's going to take you just as far or even further than going, you know, worrying about only the body and the actual physical stuff. 
that we're doing. You know, there's your mind is probably that's usually the thing holding you back even more than your physical limitations. Your body is capable. You don't even have a clue your body's capable. You know why your mind's probably holding you back. So we'll actually be covering those physical limitations that you think you have, whether it's an old injury or your age, you think you're too old to get in shape or whatever. We'll be going over that in just a little bit. But first, I want to go over these two ways to overcome obstacles and overcome those haters that we always talk about, and those fucking douchebags out there that are intentionally holding you back in life, that are just want to see you fall, want to bring you down. We're going to go over a little bit of that. So you, you might have noticed, like I said, I go beyond the fitness and the exercise here. We, we talk a lot about the psychology of your goals. We go a lot deeper and more personal into your professional life and your, your, work, your work life. This is due to the fact that once you have the proper mindset, and start taking care of yourself physically, start fueling your, the machine the proper way and start tuning up the machine with the proper training that we do here at Peak Physique, I guarantee it that your personal life your, and, and your professional life in your, your job, your business, whatever, will both positively improve a ton. Probably your, your professional life will improve even more, the same or more than your, than your personal and your fitness life. You know, that's just the way it goes. It's gonna all work together. It all starts clicking. Once you start clicking on, on all cylinders, you know, that's when magic is going to happen. This is all the things that we work on in detail in my private advanced nutrition and accountability with my accountability coaching clients that we have in our Game Changer program. There's a few of them going on in that program right now. We're actually finishing the fourth week right now. We're going to go into, future, into detail a little more of that in the future. In that program, basically, it's an exclusive program. We take all these aspects that we're talk, we talk about on these Facebook Lives for the most part. We take them to the next level. We dissect that shit. We break it down into details, and it leads to crazy, ridiculous physical and mental greatness. And like I said, not just in your body, but in your just entire life, everything you do in life. How you, one of, how, once someone said, how you do anything is how you do everything, and that's so fucking true. So if you would like more information on the Game Changer program, just leave a comment or text me, call you, call me, and I'll, I'll help you out, let you know a little more information about that. We're actually in the four week, it's an eight week program, we're in the fourth week that right now. So we'll be starting up another one in the future. It's going awesome. Those guys are killing it. So uh, basically, one second, I just saw some, uh, I just saw some question in there. A few of my friends say I'm being brainwashed and I was like, okay, you're dumped, fuck you. That's the attitude I have right there. That's exactly what we're about to go into right now. You, you read my mind. Christine just said, the friend says she's brainwashed. Yo, yeah, you're brainwashed. Like when you go out to eat and you pass on the cake and someone says to you, oh, you gotta live a little bit. You gotta live a little bit. Motherfucker, I am living a little bit. I'm gonna live a long time because of what I'm doing now. Eating a piece of cake is living a little bit or they tell me, oh, you gotta eat this cheeseburger. You gotta have some fun once in a while. Listen, if eating a fucking cheeseburger is fun to you, you need to just reevaluate your, your whole thought process. How that's fucking fun to you? I guarantee you, you can find some better ways of fun than that. So anyway, we're going to go into the life-changing mentality and mindset. The first one that we're going to go over, it's slightly inspired by a recent book I read, which my Game Changer people are reading right now, or about to start reading. It's called The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck. Basically, it's about zero fucks is what I call it. The zero fuck mentality, which I've lived like for a long time after I realized, you know, what really, really matters. I see, like I said, last week when we dropped those 10 people off of Facebook. I see too many times on Facebook and, our, and on our private VIP page that we have for our members, a private page that we have on Facebook, and then also just in life in general. I see people caring so much about what other people think of them, what other people say about them, or how they look, or how they dress, or what kind of car they drive, or whatever the, whatever the fuck else they're worried about that everyone thinks. The clothes that they're wearing, their body image, whether they're too fat, too skinny, this and that. Like I said, the car they drive. What people say about them, you know what? Fucking blah, fucking blah. I don't really care. They waste so much time giving a fuck about all that stupid shit that really doesn't matter. And no one, and it doesn't add any added value to their life or benefit anyone around them. So why waste time on giving a fuck about meaningless shit? Use that energy, that fire, that fucking passion, that stubborn discipline you have. You're so disciplined and worried and, and, and making everyone else happy. How about you use that same discipline? To give a fuck about a few things in life that really matter to you, the real things that are important, the real things you need to be worrying about. That's what you need to be doing. Giving a fuck on those, about those things. Those things that will get you closer to your goals and create success and make you overall more happy. Look at me. Wouldn't you like to be as happy and as joyful as me? Don't like, I look like a happy, joyful, friendly motherfucker, right? Stop giving a fuck like me and you could be a big ray of sunshine like me. I walk into a room with like a bright ray of sunshine. Fucking smells like flowers and peaches everywhere I go because of my sparkling personality of just not giving a complete fuck about most things. Those are the things that you should be giving a fuck about. Those things that are more important to you, that are going to get you to where you want to be, that are in line with your goals like we keep talking about. That mindset. You need to switch your whole mindset. 
because I don't know about you, but I don't have enough. T- I don't have enough time and a certain amount of energy in my day and in my life for a certain amount of fucks per day and only a certain amount of fucks per lifetime. So why would I waste my giving a fuck on some stupid ass shit about all these people out there that are gonna do nothing for me, not benefit my life, they don't give a shit about me, they just wanna see me fail. Why would I waste time on people's bullshit expectations and lies and gossip and the people not in line with my mission and my purpose, which is to help as many people as possible, to help you guys, to change your mindset, to keep myself motivated and positive. Why would I give a, a, a shit about any of that? Like I told you last time, my five-year-old Tyson wears his t-shirts backwards to school, backwards and inside out when he's feeling really crazy. He said he likes it that way and that's how he wants it, wants to wear it, so you know what, fuck it, go ahead. I don't give a fuck, it makes him happy. It, he's, he's, he already doesn't care what other people think. Is what, you know, that matters to him. What, you heard your name? Anyway, he heard his name, so. Anyway, he already understands the art of not caring and the meaningless nonsense, not letting what other people worry about you and say about you. He, he already doesn't even give a, give a shit about that. Easter eggs. Look at He'll even say to make excuses. It's an art, not being nonsense. And not letting what you thought or judgment affect him and his happiness. And he's five years old. If he can understand that concept, there's no reason that you can't understand. Oh, we got another one coming. The girl got Jeff. No juices. All right, they're gone, so we can go back to talking about happiness. Whoop their ass if they try to pick on them about it anyway, so that really doesn't matter. So, uh, like I also last week I was saying how, like, I got the idea and the style of wearing two different sneakers from my two-year-old daughter, now three years old. Most people are like, oh my god, that, that kid is so weird. Not me, I'm like, I don't really, I don't give a fuck. I think it's cool, it's original, and now I do it myself. I got my fashion style, this thing is tilting, from a two-year-old. And you know what? Because I don't give a fuck. Now I wear two different color sneakers. I won't even buy a pair of sneakers at the store if I can't get... Two, two of the same kind in different colors. I won't do it. I'll have to search and make sure I get the right size. I even have a pair that I had to get. They had them in two different sizes, but I needed two colors, so I got one in, in, in whatever it is, 12 and one in 12 and a half, whatever. That's just the way it is. So when you start not giving a fuck, it is a powerful thing. I have been riding the not give a fuck wave for so many years now, and it just makes you a totally different person. It takes you every part of your life, every part of your existence to the next level. It's fucking awesome. It's like a superpower. It's like a, a superhero. You're like fucking invincible. There's nothing that can phase you. Nothing can break your will. Nothing can break your spirit. Nothing can break through your fucking armor because petty shit doesn't matter to you. It just doesn't matter. It bounces right off you, all the bullshit. It doesn't slow you down. It's nonsense. It even fuels your fire to not give a fuck even more when you start not giving a fuck. So all my life, people hated me, tried to make fun of me when I was a kid. I was the poor, skinny kid that wore my 10-year-old, 10-year-old brother's clothes. Never had cable TV, I didn't smoke or do the drugs like everyone else, I had zero friends, I hated school, never had any friends in high school, went to any parties like I've told you before, and even to this day, people try to bring me down, discourage me, lie on me, pray for my failure. You know what? Guess what? I don't give a fuck. I'm trained to kill a man with my bare hands without blinking an eye, without elevating my fucking heart rate. You think I give a fuck what anyone thinks about me? I know my goals, I know my fucking morals. I know my objectives, my passion, my mission, and my purpose. And no half-assed, two-faced, little bitch-ass fucker is going to get in my way. Or they will just get run the fuck over without hesitation. 95% of what people waste their time, their energy, and their emotion on giving a fuck about is a waste of their time and their personal resources. 
Focus on the 5% of your life that is worthy and deserving of you giving a fuck about. My mission, my purpose, my 5% of fucks, like I've told you guys before, has been reserved for my family and for the people in this world who I can help, who truly want and need my help. People who want to change their life for the better, who want to live healthier, more purposeful existence. All you peak freaks out there, you are my fucking 5%. You're my 5% of fucks, that's why I give a fuck about. I'm a, I'm a United States Marine, a trained killer, a warrior, a savage. It's in my blood. I would kill for my 5%. I'll fucking die for my 5%. I will do whatever it takes to guarantee that my 5% succeeds. Not giving a fuck about the other 95%, that is easy to me. The, the, that 5% I'm talking about, that will carry you your entire life. That will carry you to greatness, to great victories, great successes. Put simply, giving a fuck a lot less will, will just positively impact the way that you give a fuck a lot more, if that makes sense. Makes sense to me in my brain, whatever. So don't waste your fucks on the bullshit and the bullshit people around you that are trying to drag you down, that tell you you're obsessed and you're brainwashed. You're brainwashed for wanting to be healthy and not be overweight like like 95% of the freaking country. Be that 5%. Focus on your 5% of what's worthy of it. So on that note, leads me to another one of this week's tasks. Did everyone of you yell it out before and I told you to scream? I want to hear you scream now. I want to hear you scream through the freaking teeth, through this phone, whatever, through the computer. Did you scream on the first task? All right, so your second task leads me to this. I tried. The, I did this experiment. It was a, over a year ago, probably like 18 months ago. One of, I had one, someone that had given me the task of not watching any news, zero news, for one week. I'm talking about no newspapers, listening to no radio, no TV news, none of that stuff. Not a single click on a Facebook article that is news related. So I did this task myself like a year and a half ago, at least. I tried it for one week, and guess what? I never went back. I never put the news back on. It's all bullshit. It's all poisonous propaganda. It's all negative bullshit adding zero value to your life. And, and definitely not contributing to your mission and purpose, that's for sure. It's all about who got shot, who robbed who, who did this scam, what government person did this, all this bullshit that you don't even understand half of it. It's just all negative nonsense. What 63-year-old lady got raped in broad daylight at the mall? I don't need that shit. I don't need to know that shit. I don't need to, that negativity in my brain. My brain is already fucked up as it is, if you could tell, with enough anxiety of my own shit. I don't need that stuff dragging me down. If we, if there's an invasion out there, I don't need to watch the news to tell me there's an invasion. I'm already ready for an invasion. So, I don't care. I'm already ready. All the time. So, if it's going to snow, like it's snowing today. If you're already ready and you just don't care if it snows and you're going to just keep doing what you do, when it snows, you're going to adapt and overcome like do a Facebook Live video from home because the police aren't letting you drive outside telling you it's too dangerous and this and that. You know what? That's what you're going to do. Adapt and overcome. Ignore the news. I don't, I don't even need to know who the president is. I don't even care who the president is at some point. Of course, I'm going to respect her my president is no matter what, but I don't really care who it is. And that, will not, that, that president is not going to stop me from... Achieving my goal of helping 20,000 people by the year 2020. And certainly not going to help you lose the, the fat on your body and transform your life. So drop the news and with that, drop all the fucking excuses. That news is just going to bring you down. It's a, it's a mind and energy suck. Don't let it drag you down. So try to go one week. Zero news. Don't click on those things on Facebook, those, those news articles, those titles, all that crap. Drop it. All right, so that's going to bring us to the second one. The second mindset, mind shift that we're going to do in your mindset. So, if this will make you success in the gym and even just life in general, for that matter. Someone once, someone once asked me why the hell there was a, a, a dog on our logo. This is just a total side thing I just thought of because someone said that in a question and for some reason this came up. So, first of all, it's because I want it there. The dog is on our logo. It represents several things. First is a picture of our former gym mascot, Tyson. Yes, his name is Tyson. The same as my... Same as my crazy ass son. They have the same name because guess what? Guess what? I don't give a fuck and that's what I wanted to do. So if you remember the last section about giving a fuck, that explains that. Anyway, he's been in the gym every day with us and I like him better than most people. I like him better than all people actually. So I just wanted to put him on our logo just for being an awesome freaking dog. Anyway, a couple months ago, we had to put him down. He, uh, he took every, he, he, because he took everything that we talk about to the extreme, this dog. He was too tough and stubborn for his own good. He was almost, he was a boxer pit bull. He was almost 16 years old, which is an outrageous age for that type of dog. And I swear, he just would have kept kicking until he was 25 years old. He was, a, he was a fucking warrior. Like I said, boxer pit bull mix. So that was perfect. That's perfectly fitting for our logo. You need, the, you need to be like an obsessed pit bull. That is a mindset you need to have. You need to be like an obsessed pit bull. So this 
fit on our logo is perfect, perfectly fitting. You need to be an obsessed pit bull, always charging straight forward towards any obstacle, towards any goal, and not letting go of that motherfucker for anything. And not letting any excuses stop you from letting go of whatever you're chasing after, whatever it is. So that pit bull also represents our trainers and you, our entire peak freak family. We need to always be on the attack. Latch on to your goals like a pit bull is freaking latching on with their jaws and obsessively just keep ripping and tearing and fucking attacking until you blast through all those barriers and dominate your fucking path and conquer your goals into whatever it is you're looking to succeed at. So what is, what is success? How do you do that? It's back into this pit bull mentality. Pit bull, you need to be literally a fucking bull charging head on into the fire every day. In order to be successful, you need to be that bull. You need to be bull. We call it the bull, the pit bull mentality. Flex a bull, door a bull, avail a bull, ply a bull. Personal bull, personal bull, coach a bull. Without these basic characteristics, it's impossible to be successful here in the gym with your fitness and weight loss and, and performance goals and also just in everyday life. So everything we go over is relates to the gym, but it also is going to relate and improve your life in general and again, your professional life. It's going to take everything to that next level of greatness. So think about that list. Are you all those things? Are you? Are you a pit bull? Are you flexible, durable, available, pliable, personable, coachable? I don't know if I'm all those things. I'm probably, I'm all of them probably except personable because I hate everybody, but whatever. So without those basic characteristics, it's going to be impossible for you to succeed in the gym, in life. You need to be all those. So next, I had a, next, uh, moving on. I had basically just some questions. I've been asking you guys to ask questions. I've been getting a lot of tons of emails of questions. So I just took those questions and put them into these segments. Like someone actually asked about the logo in one of the questions. Why is there a dog on there? I fucking want that to be. And... I just explained why. So next, someone had a question about exercise and an injury. They said, I'm, I, uh, it was a few actually about injuries. They, can, they don't want to lose their progress. They hurt themselves doing this, moving a couch or doing something stupid, something they shouldn't be doing. Got drunk and fell off a curb and freaking twisted their ankle or some shit. So the first thing you need to do is differentiate between an injury, a strain, and soreness. There is a huge difference between those three things. If something is just tweaked, like you slept on your shoulder wrong, or maybe your neck is tweaked or something, your sh or your shoulder's just sore from overuse, or doing something you haven't done in a while, that's different than an injury. The, this program at Peak Physique, first of all, speaking about injuries, is designed to be done by itself. There is no additional work that is needed to be done outside of, the, outside of this training program if you're making it here consistently four to five times a week, with three times a week coming to the gym being a minimum and six times being the maximum. So. Another thing that I noticed that some people maybe would get injured for, they try to go do some things on their own or they try to switch up some programs, that's usually not going to work. If you're doing a boot camp class here and then doing some training elsewhere, there's probably a good chance you're going to hurt yourself. You know why? Because I've seen majority of the so-called trainers and training facilities and wannabe boot camp classes and wannabe peak physiques in Rockland County, I've seen them that many, they'll try to emulate what we do. But there's a specific reason why we do every little thing we do. The exact techniques, the order of the exercises, the amounts, the time of the reps, the specific amount of rest, the overall weekly, monthly, even yearly fucking plan that we have is all scientifically and practically applied and formulated to be conducive to our overall goals and objectives here at Peak Physique. So you can't just see something and copy it. A couple of times I've even seen people try to mix in, mix our carefully constructed program with others that try to copy and imitate what we do. So, and often that is actually when they strain something or get injured. Some, some dumbass that just sees a five minute video clip of ours on YouTube and then irresponsibly just tosses that into a client's workout in their wannabe gym or wannabe freaking boot camp in the park or something, wannabe peak physique. It's just, they're just a pure fucking dumbass. Let me tell you like that. Like seriously, come by the trainers out there. Seriously, just come by, make an appointment. I'll help you out. Put, put the safety of your people first that you're pretending to try to help out because you're not helping them. You're fucking hurting them. You're hindering their progress. You're hindering the process of their weight loss and their results. You, you, you better just fucking pay me after that because and, pay me, and send me some rent for trying to copy us all the time and try to be like us. Don't make me come collect that rent. I may come collect one day. Anyway, we formulated this program over after 20 years of experience and practice and science and practical application, trial and error, along with some common fucking sense. Try that once in a while. It's going gonna, it's gonna to take you far in life, some fucking common sense. It's amazing how that shit works, huh? You can't just copy this shit of what you see on a five minute YouTube video and now all of a sudden you're Mr. Billy Badass Trainer come with some great idea that you're putting in a program makes no complete sense where you're putting it and you're just hurting these people. You're not going to get any results and they're going to be in the freaking hospital soon. 
All because you're a dumbass. Anyway, I'm obviously no fucking doctor, but you know, actually speaking of doctors, it makes me think. Of 15 years ago, when I got or when I got the Marine Corps, first time the Marine Corps, I started going through like the police officer process. I was training in a local like big box gym. Same time, I figured I'll take the police test. You know, backup plan, maybe on the side, I'll do could do a swing at both. So I was, I went through the process to become a police officer. This is because we're on doctors. This made me think of this. So I could get off tangents. My brain just spins. It spins nonstop. It doesn't stop. It's all day. You only have to deal with me a few minutes at a time. I have to deal with what's in here 24 fucking hours a day. It doesn't ever stop. Trust me, and I love it. That's what makes me me. Makes that's what makes peak physique. Peak physique is that nonstop. Anyway, so I went. I was taking the police test. The doctors they told me that I was obese, and I was just out of the Marine Corps. It's like whatever, 18 years ago. I don't know, from 15 years ago, 20 years ago, whatever amount of years ago. So I was considered obese according to their height and weight standards, which is a joke. They made me go to a special cardiologist like three times. I had to do all these different procedures and sonograms on my heart. And I'm telling you, I was just out of the Marine Corps. So I was going through the hiring process. So I wasn't in too bad a shape, similar shape to I am in now, which I'm, I try to stay in halfway decent shape at least. So I'm there in the doctor's office. This guy did all these freaking tests on my heart. This port, portly shaped, round shaped doctor with a dick do sitting there in the chair. And if you don't know what a dick do is, that's from my down south marine friends. All right, I'll tell you what a dick do is. A dick do, he'd be sitting there, this one out of shape a little bit, belly sticking out. The drill instructor says, "What the hell is that?" And he pu- punches him in the st- or hits him in the stomach. He said, "That's my dick do, sir." He said, "Your dick do? What the fuck is your dick do?" He said, "That's where my belly stick out farther than my dick do." And so this doctor's sitting there with his dick do in his chair, while I'm standing there almost fucking naked in my boxers, sitting there, and this fucker's gonna tell me I'm overweight according to the police standards, and I need to start some kind of moderate exercise regimen, and I need to alter my diet by, he's gonna slowly, tell me to slowly lower my sodium intake, because he doesn't wanna, he wants to start me off slowly, so I'm not overwhelmed with too much all at once, he doesn't wanna overwhelm me. I'm like, what the fuck? I'm like, I left there and realized that obviously, I wasn't meant for this job. And to top it all off, to really let me know that, a week later I got my test back for my psychological evaluation. They told me I was a crazy motherfucker and I couldn't be a cop. So I lucked out, I guess. But it doesn't even make sense, first of all. So I wasn't too crazy to go to the Marine Corps at 19 years old, straight out of freaking jail. I wasn't too crazy for that to give me some high power rifles and throwing grenades and operating a million dollar piece of equipment in the Marine Corps. But I'm too crazy. I'm told I'm too crazy and too fat to be a cop. So that's pretty funny. That's a whole joke in itself. Anyway, thank God that all happened. I might not have been able to be here right now to help you guys and bring me to my true calling, my passion, which is to be here fucking battling here in the middle of a snowstorm on whatever the hell day today is, a Tuesday afternoon with all you trying to change as many lives as possible. So thank God that I was just a crazy fat bastard when I was 23 years old. Thank God. It saved my life. Anyway, back on track because I just go off on these tangents. What was I on? I don't even remember. The, uh, the mind, how my mind could just splatter all over the place. I don't even remember what the hell I was on. Anyway, when I was a kid, they, they probably would have pumped me with so much drugs. Like nowadays, if I was a kid in today's era, they probably would have pumped me with so many of those prescription drugs. They would have been like, oh, this kid has everything known to man. He's got the attention span of a doorknob. He's got the ADD or whatever the fuck it's called, PCP or ACDC, whatever the fuck that shit is called. They'd be like, he has this. Here, take 15 prescription medications. I'd probably walk around like a zombie and I wouldn't be able also being able to help change his life. So good thing I was born and I grew up in the fucking 80s where that shit really what didn't exist it and they didn't know anything about it or else I also wouldn't have been able to hear to help you guys. So thank God I was in the 80s before they started pumping these kids off full of drugs. Thank God I was a fat, crazy bastard trying to be a cop or else I couldn't have been here trying to help you guys and change as many lives as possible. All right, now back on track for real. What are we talking about? We're talking about injuries. Injuries. So in general, with injuries, if a movement hurts, don't do it. Pretty simple. But you need to know the difference between what's hurting. Is an injury a strain? Is whatever you're doing and you feel it making your injury worse, then don't do it. If it's just a slight strain or soreness and you kind of notice it when you're doing an exercise and you could possibly work through it, then often that's gonna actually make it feel better, working through just a little strain or something, actually working it out. Like they say, you either use it or you fucking lose it. So now soreness is also another thing. People think, I think that, oh, they're injured, I strained something. No, you didn't strain something. You didn't strain something, you're sore. You didn't do that shit for a long time. You probably worked out hard for once. And so you're sore, you're not injured. So it's pretty normal to be very sore after your first session or two, especially to having currently been too active or not used to our signature style of training here at Peak Physique, 
which is quite different, often imitated, can't be duplicated, you can't copy our shit, you can try, but you're just gonna hurt these people like we said earlier. So usually the best thing to do is just keep moving. Keep your blood flowing, slowly work yourself through it when you're just extreme, talking about like extreme soreness. Slowly work yourself through it. Ensure that you're adequately hydrating yourself, drink a, a shitload of water, and that you're getting enough protein to help repair your muscles. Make sure you're recovering. Recovery also occurs during sleep, so make sure you're getting enough, enough sleep. That's one of the biggest drawbacks of my program. If I get four, four hours of sleep in a night, that's like a full night's sleep. That's like, a, that's like me sleeping in. So you can still come to a training session if you're over sore, just modify when you need to, go at your own pace. Be sure to tell your trainer that you're either new or you're sore or you strained something and that you're gonna need some modifications, go at your own pace. That all being said, you do need some rest days too, so make sure you do take a rest day when you need it. Only when you fucking need it. Don't be a lazy shit and just because you have some shit to do or you're making up that you're lazy that, oh, I really need a rest day, I'm just sore. No, when you need it. One day a week is gonna be good enough for rest once you get into the flow. Don't make any excuses. So basically about these injuries and soreness and all this other stuff, that was the long version. Let me give you the short, short version. Stop being a little fucking bitch. There's the short version, okay? Get your shit together, stop searching for excuses, rather than excuses and problems, find the fucking solution. And on that note, here's our legal disclaimer. First of all, for the, uh, we have to give a legal disclaimer for those potential little bitches out there that tend to miss training sessions due to the vicious paper cut on their finger or whatever the fuck happens to them. Always get clearance from a medical professional before starting any exercise program. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, you know that stuff, so there you go. So I didn't, don't come in, come in here all injured and say, oh, Steve told me to train when I have three broken legs. So whatever. All right, enough of that. Moving on. So I've been coming to our, our classes for a little while. This is another question some of that, some of that sent. Said, I've been coming to your classes for a little while and I've seen some great results in a short amount of time. Everyone is asking me, what am I doing? I'm losing weight. Losing so much weight, and how do I lose so much weight? I always tell them about this, your amazing place, Peak Physique. I just had one question. My mother loves everything I tell her about the experience of Peak Physique. She says my dramatic transformation, and she has a lot of weight to lose herself, so she's asking me about it. Now, this gym is the most intense fucking place I've ever seen. Here's a fucking, that just came out of my mouth. It just slips out. I can't help it. Anyway, he said this gym is the most intense place I have ever, ever stepped foot into, and I've been to a lot of places, so do you think my mother would be able to handle it? She is 57 years old. So my answer, first of all, Maureen just said everything can be modified. Don't worry, we're calling your name in a second. So first of all, 57 isn't that old. We can certainly help her and she could achieve crazy weight loss and crazy results and crazy performance results and goals eventually even. So yes, we're very hardworking. We are a, a focused group of intense motherfuckers, a focused group of people, but any fitness level can join any class that we do including boxing even. She, she could even come to a boxing class and she would be fine. We will take care of her. That is what we do. This is what we specialize in. We are professionals. We are the leader of this. All of our training sessions are possible for any fitness level. In the beginning, you're going to go at your own pace. You're going to modify any movements or exercise that you need to. Your trainer will show you several modifications for every exercise you need to. Even with something completely different, we're going to hook you up. We're going to take care of you. This is what we do. We're professionals. So when you first start, you might, you might be a little excited, nervous, anxious, so you need to stay calm and focused and just make sure you're not overdoing it in the beginning and just build yourself up step by step. Use that first week or two to kind of just learn the movements, wake your body up, get your, your joints loosened up, get, get into the flow, get the blood flowing again before you start going ape shit crazy. Like, like my man Ruben in the, in the group class, I think he's been here like six or seven months. I'm not sure how old he is, but he's you know an older gentleman. In the beginning, he had a ton of limitations. He couldn't perform any one single range of motion movement. We constantly gave him modifications and alternate exercises and stretches. He'd been adapting and overcoming day in, day out, session by session, slightly improving range of motion, just a millimeter every day for the last six, seven months. Slightly improving his flexibility, his coordination, his balance, his endurance, little by little. The other day, I saw Ruben doing a fucking full jumping squat thrust with a bolster ball. We got it on video. We, we, we were celebrating it. Like, this crazy what he was able to do from where he started. Oh, and guess what? He's, he's already surpassed over 50 pounds weight loss, and that's with modifying every single, almost every single exercise. Because he didn't make excuses. He adapted. He overcame. He didn't bullshit. He came in and still busted his ass to his potential. Ruben is kicking ass. He's over 50 pounds now. How old are you, Ruben, if you're watching? Comment down there. I'm not sure how old you are. At least 49, right? Maybe 50. Anyway, so then we have our famous Veggie Man. Veggie Man has a whole following out there. He just turned 60 years old. 
He's been training us with us for over seven years. He's a complete cardio and conditioning and boxing freak. I hold mitts for him. My elbows and shoulders are jarring and torn all the rest of the day and sore from this motherfucker punching the mitts. He is 60 years old. He is a cardio conditioning freak. I would put his performance and capabilities up against anyone half his age Daddy that man. comes around. Daddy Here's some of Veggie Man's fans. Look at that. They know Veggie Man, they love Veggie Man. <laughs> Alright, there's Veggie Man's friends and his, his fans. Like I said, I'll put his conditioning up against anyone. Then we got Adam, Adam Mosio. He's still weightlifting with us three to four times a week, still doing cardio and balance and agility drills and agility ladders. He's still boxing, hitting the heavy bags. The other day, he's 71 years old, I think. He deadlifted. Adam, 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 they know Adam too. Adam, they know everyone in there. See that. He's 71 years old. The other day he deadlifted over 315 pounds at 71 fucking years old. And then he went out and jogged four miles outside in the cold after that. Probably with no jacket because he is just a freak. He is an old school, hardcore Vietnam combat veteran Marine. Guy's an animal. So recently, taking it to the next level, we've been doing some case studies. Recently called up one of our members, Mar Marlene Castricado. And we did a case study on her. I'm not sure how old she is either. At least what, 39, 40, maybe a little more, I'm not sure. So all these people that I'm talking about, uh, these are different examples. You can start at any age, you can peak at any age, and you can maintain at any age of the examples I just gave you. I once read this, an extensive study they did on strength training for women over 75. They just started a resistance training program for the first time in their lives. They were some of them as old as 88 years old, and guess what, they were still building Lean muscle, still increasing their bone density, still getting stronger and healthier at between 75 and 88 years old. So there's, there's no limit to what you can do, no matter what your age. So that's just another one of those self-limiting factors that we talked about earlier. So don't let your age or an injury be your self-limiting factor. So an example of how to pr progress here, maybe in week one, in your maybe go 30%. You just started, you had, you know, you're, you're a little older, you never did this stuff before. Week one, go 30% of your max with the intention of just learning the movements, getting your body acclimated to the, to the proper movements and the, and the techniques. Week two, maybe go at 45, 50%. Then week three, you know, adjust accordingly. Go to 75, 80%, and then eventually building up to, you know, 100% as needed or when you feel ready. Day after day, week after week, you'll continue to keep coming. You'll continue to keep improving. You'll get stronger. You'll get better conditioned. You'll be more confident. And it's all gonna just, all the pieces of the puzzle are just gonna come together. We'll, we'll, we'll take care of you every fucking step of the way. We'll guide you every step of the way. So let's see, I had some questions pop in there. Let's see. Veggie Man, 70 year old goals. One second. Trying to read some of those questions there because a bunch of things were popping up. Oh, someone asked about Marlene. I must have skipped over that when I was talking about uh, the case study with Marlene. Right, back to the uh, age and uh, whatever. So yeah, Marlene. So she, we, I recently interviewed her. We did a, a case study with her. So I asked her, why did you start this fitness program? She said, she started the program for medical reasons. And again, she's, you know, whatever, a, a little older. She said it was important for her to be at her strongest, to lose weight. And that would be a great product, byproduct of what she was trying to achieve is just losing the weight of, of getting stronger. So then I asked her if her doctors had ever... What, oh. Some more no excuses eggs. So then I asked her if, if her doctor said what they, they said about her physical state or where, where she was. And this is what she, how she answered me. She said, my medical issues read like a train wreck. I have a double herniated disc since I was 22 years old. I walked a fine line to surgery for the last 30 years. She said, I have degenerative disc disease, spinal stenosis, sciatica, two C-sections, compromised her back. 
rheumatic arthritis in both knees. She had surgery on her left knee. The cartilage torn and shredded so bad that, she, that it was completely removed. She had bone on bone in her knees. Essentially, basically she spent the last 25 years in and out of physical therapy and gyms and personal training and never achieved any results or any of the progress that her doctors wanted her to have. So she's become strong. She wanted to become strong to support her back and her knees. And she's been told that she was, she should it'd be better if she's on the skinny side because the reduced weight would take off her knees and that should delay, delay the, the knee replacement that they want her to have, which obviously she wants to avoid. Then also genetically, she has all the markers for heart disease, high blood pressure, diabetes, and so far, uh, thank God these, none of these issues have affected her, but they're all still there in the pipeline if she doesn't take care of her stuff and could possibly, you know, she's had family members on both sides have complications related to those issues. So what, what caused her initial weight gain in the past? She said the most recent weight gain was after the knee surgery. Her knee surgery kept her off her feet with the cortisone shots for nine freaking months. And she didn't recuperate so quickly or easily as she hoped. So it slowed down in physical therapy and all that frustration. And the gym and personal training was off the table for at least a year. And then, so I asked her what, what uh, fitness program she tried before in the past that worked or didn't work. She said she tried every diet, every exercise program she could find, both locally, online, in the last 20 years. Most recently, she's tried all kinds of, in the past, I mean, she tried different yogas and low impact stuff and Pilates and boot camps and burn classes and pump classes and all that stuff and got zero results from that over the last three years. So I asked her what, is, what are the results that she achieved here at Peak Physique and in, in what amount of time and how many times a week has she trained here? She started in this summer, but really got really focused and committed, you know, due to scheduling and stuff. Once we added some additional classes in, in September, and she comes about three times a week. She actually now just added in some personal training sessions into her boot camp classes. She said, and her goal and her why is her daughter wants a beach vacation this summer, and she doesn't want to disappoint her and feel uncomfortable in a bathing suit. She, her body has now become more sculpted. Her arms that are no longer, she's no longer embarrassed over. Her legs are looking good. The squats that, that she's doing, she said are toning her glutes. And you know, she obviously still is, wants to be a work in progress and wants to keep improving. That's the mentality to have, always improving. So then I asked her what she would say about PPC to someone that might be in the same position as her and looking to lose weight. She, she said she would tell them to step out of their comfort zone. You're capable of so much more than you think you are at any age, like she is. And all these complications she has, and look, and she's now getting in one, you know, the most ridiculous shape of her life. I'll post a picture in the comments here, her, her uh, picture where she's at right now in the comments when we're done here. So she said, Peak Physique has a badass attitude that empowers you to achieve. The trainers embody the results we're looking for. Yes, they're tough. It's tough love because they want us to succeed. That said, you can modify on the fly, push us to results at a pace that will alter our boundaries. One of, the, one of the most important tools the trainers bring to these sessions beyond their knowledge and enthusiasm is the ability to bond us as a team for that hour. We got this. This can be heard around the floor, around the room, and it often supplies that, you know, that last push of energy and motivation that you need. We have a no man left behind mentality. And our members, all the Peak Freaks, embrace that. They help each other out. They support each other. She then said her favorite thing about Peak Physique is like, I, like she was going... On earlier was the team bonding. Now it's huge. Being overweight or out of shape is often a lonely thing, even if it's in, in your own freaking heads. You know, she said, she said she's worked with veterans, helped them transition to civilian life. When pitching them to corporations, she would say, Our armed forces are trained for greatness. They know how to build a team that would meet any challenge. And she said she senses that in our workouts and in our philosophy and in our culture and in our training sessions. And we're trained to achieve. On, you know, we're, we're, we're training to achieve our own greatness and with that old man left behind mentality. She said this program, this, our Peak Physique program, boot camp and personal training program has completely changed her life. She said now she goes sleeveless. You gotta see the picture I'm gonna put in. She's sitting there flexing, sleeveless. Uh, she said she saw a show, the 50 year old woman asked the cosmetic surgeon what she could do for her arms or whatever. And the surgeon replied, weird sleeves. She would say, she said she would have told them to join Peak Physique, step away from the sleeves, forget about surgery, re and rethink who you want to be in 10 years. She said, I'm more flexible, my stability is improving, I look in the mirror and see a body I never thought was mine to have. I thought I was too old to achieve these visual results. I go hiking with the dog and the family, whereas I used to wait in the car and read a freaking book. We have, she said we have a boat that's uh, 
she said she has a boat she hasn't been on in several years because of her stability issues and not having the balance and the strength to even go on the boat. And she can't wait for this summer because her outlook is totally different. She doesn't feel old. She she wants a, she's gonna buy a leather dress and surprise her family. It's crazy. It's crazy what you can achieve no matter what your age, as long as you get rid of those self-limiting fucking factors and th that are in your head. She said she's in pictures now instead of taking pictures. Her children, her children now are gonna have visual reminders of their family and their mom in the photos, not always hiding and going out of the photos. She said, I feel, I feel like I'm setting a healthier role model for my daughter and strong is a new sexy. When you feel better about how you look, it changes your relationship with your husband and that makes everyone happy. And this is her words, word for word, from Marlene, telling you a little bit about her. So, uh, back to where we were. We were on some questions. Any questions there? Boot camp versus boxing, should you mix them? Do one more than the other? Is it better than the other for weight loss? Someone asked between boot camp and boxing. Pretty much all of our success stories and major weight loss have done a combination of boot camp and boxing. It's designed that they both go hand in hand, they work with each other, everyone mixes them. Some days maybe you could do two sets in one day, but probably usually not recommended on a regular basis, but one or the other, no. There's no, I don't think we've ever had many people or any ever that did just boot camp or just boxing. Everyone mixes it together because it's the boxing is going to give you work your different energy systems, a lot of different type of core work, a lot of coordination work, things that the boot camp isn't necessarily going to work on. So they are just go conducive to each other. That was one of the questions. What else we got here? As always, I'll go through the questions after if I miss any. We have a contest of the month. So starting tomorrow, or yeah, tomorrow, we're gonna be having a Facebook check-in raffle. So as you know, each month we donate to a different charity based on your Facebook check-ins. And this month's charity is for meals for kids. So every two check-ins you do here at PVZ, we're providing one meal for a child in need. So the more you check in, the more we donate, the more we help feed these children in need. So for the next 10 days, we're gonna take that to the, a step further starting tomorrow. Every time you attend a class and you check in on Facebook, Confirm it with your trainer, quick flash of it, they're gonna give you a raffle ticket. We're also gonna obviously donate the meals on, our meals for kids, plus you're gonna receive that one top raffle ticket. After the 10 days, we're gonna draw the winner for a supplement basket with tons of our Herbalife supplements. Speaking of which, I need some because I'm up here battling nonstop for who knows how long. So you're gonna get a, over $100 worth value of a gift basket, supplements, t-shirts, some meal replacement type stuff. Good stuff, good stuff. That green tea will keep you going all day. Anyway, so that whole thing of the donating and the, the donating for the charities, that fits into our entire mission, which is to help as many people as possible in every way we can. So if you like these Facebook Lives, make sure you leave a comment in the section below, like it, share it, uh, tag your friends in it. If you like these Facebook Lives to do, if you also make sure you go on our Facebook Peak Physique Business page, leave a review on there. If you haven't left a review yet, let us know about your experience and your goals on the Facebook review. I also left a link down there in the comments or wherever in the title with our Google Business page. So make sure you go leave a review there. Tell us all about your awesome results and you know, that'd be fucking awesome if you can go do that. So any other questions on there? This has been a long one. I don't know how long it's been. How long has it been? Someone can tell me how long this has been? Her picture's gonna be on it. Someone asked where is Marlene's picture. I'm gonna post it here. I don't have it here on me. I'm gonna post it in uh, when we're done here. I'll post it down there in the comments. You can see her picture. I'll actually show you all the pictures of the people that I'm talking about here. We talked about Ruben. We got his pictures. We talked about Maureen, Adam, Veggie Man, and then Marlene. Show you all their stuff. Uh, There's a question that I got from Steve Owen. Actually, congratulations to him. He just hit the 25 pounds weight loss mark yesterday, and that was in just over six weeks, I believe. He said, I would love to give the Spartan race a shot in June. Aside from the boxing and boot camp sessions, are there any specific exercises you would suggest I concentrate to get ready for it? Or do the two classes pretty much cover everything? For the most part, first of all, first of all, there's nothing out there in the world that you won't be able to do if you're coming to our training sets. You, we're training you for it any situation in life, we're training you for the fucking invasion. So 
One thing I mentioned a couple of days to a few of you is I often see people sign up for these races or whatever, marathons or whatever else. They kind of enter it in the whole thing with too much anxiety and they end up getting injured or doing something stupid to prove a point. Then their big picture of goals is pushed back six to eight weeks and the results begin to suffer. So, but we, we can absolutely help you prepare for that, you know, with the way that you train. We're, pre we're preparing, like I said, we're preparing here for the fucking invasion. So a spark race, that's, that's, that's an easy one for us to train for. That's like everyday training for us here that would definitely fall into our parameters of the way we train. But some additional things you might want to do is some longer steady state distance running. Also work on your sprints. Then probably going to need to work on some increased grip strength. Maybe work on your pull-ups, different variations of pull-ups, different pair of grips. We have that rope climbing machine, different rope pulls and carries and uh, grip carries you could do at the gym, stuff like that. Just, you know, hanging on, getting used to carrying and holding and maneuvering your own body weight, stuff like that. Little additional things you could do in the beginning in your warm-ups you get there early in class or when the session's over, also on your own time, in between. How long have we been doing this? 53 minutes? Holy shit. How the hell did I talk for 53 minutes? I didn't know I was capable of doing that. Anyway, so... Anyone that's considering doing one of those races or marathon or anyway, fitness-wise, personal, professional, ask yourself one simple question. What is your main goal in fitness or professional or life or whatever? What is your mission and your purpose? I use this methodology for every fucking decision I make in life. Is this a priority and is it in the same lane as with my goals and my mission? Like I was saying earlier, people or events or ideas or choices you make, will it let you get closer to your goal? So I make every decision in life based off of that. It usually works, but sometimes it doesn't work and I just have to, I don't know, punch someone in the fucking face yeah. or whatever. So make sure whatever you, just, you decide, make the decision based on what is my big picture goals? What is my real goal? Is this really gonna bring me closer to my goal or further away from my goal? If your goal is to win a, a Spartan race or your goal, your number one priority is to run a marathon, then sure, you're gonna go practice and train to run a marathon, but that's not necessarily gonna be conducive to doing other things or being, you know, necessarily even in the best shape of your life. So, let's see. Any other questions? Because this is long, this has been going on a long time. I think that's it. Any questions I missed, because there's tons of comments in there, I'm sure I missed some. I'll go back and post them. What'd someone say here? People say I'm cold hearted because I never give a fuck about bullshit. My struggle is in my brain and always limits me to finish that last round. That's the same thing. That's a self-limiting factors that we're talking about. Letting it hold you back. Letting bullshit hold you back. You're not cold-hearted. You're smart. That's the way I see it. All right. Well, uh, you said you're losing me earlier. All right. But anyway, if you have any more questions, put them in the comments. I'll respond. Just put a little more in there. Hip flex stretch. There are tons you could do standing. There's this. I can back up here. You could do this even just standing if you can't do it. If you have to brace onto something here, you're turning here into this. Stretching right here. Even a step further, you can go down on one knee. This leg, this leg could be in the air. Pokes his hand on the floor. And you can bring this elbow all the way down. You can sit here. Lift up your chest. You're going to get tons of hip flexing and mobility in there. We'll have to show you in person. It's hard and a little really to show you, make sure you do the right way over here. And it's hard to just explain so we can show you those hip flexor stretches uh, at the gym before, after, during your next session. So that's it, we're like close to an hour. I'm sure I'm bored the hell out of you, so I think we're done. Any more questions you can put down in the comments. I'm always gonna look through the entire thing. I'll answer every single question. I'll respond to every single comment you have there and go from there. So if again, go to Facebook business page, Leave a review on the business page. Go to the Google business page. Leave a review there. Let me know how you like these lives. Right. Also, put any questions or topics you want in there. Or text me, email me. Let me know if you want some of these Facebook topics to be about. We're going to be doing this every week. And I'll see you later. Oh, yeah. And stop giving a fuck. <laughs>